every single life matters. It's the primary responsibility of government, first of all, which is we security. We banked mostly on um, intervention rather than prevention. Democracy is a government where power resides for the people. Hello and a very warm welcome to you. It's another very exciting episode of U.Gov. U.Gov is all about instilling patriotism in, this, in the people. And of course, we'll tell you about government functions, government responsibilities, as well as your corresponding obligation to your society. You owe an allegiance of obedience to laws and actually complying with laid down rules in your society. I am Itohan Oloma Agbodo. We'll go on a quick break. We'll be right back. Catch all the moments every Monday night. All the best goals. All the tackles. Match reviews from across the leagues. Watch our experts give total analysis on every game. And get a closer look at all the stars from around the world of football. You ask where? We say watch Total Football every Monday night on Love World Plus. You're welcome back if you just joined us. This is you.gov and this week on the show we are going to be taking a look at what it takes to declare the seat of a seven senator vacant. And um, of course, we'll go to the street to find out the opinions of Nigerians, how well they know this topic before we go and meet our legal experts who will be enlightening us on the requirements by law and order generally. And um, we'll be right back. Well, uh, to my own opinion and my view, I don't think one an uh, official or government uh, official, rather as in our senators, are indicted until they have been exonerated from such indictment. They should not receive uh, salaries. If they can be receiving salary, then an ordinary Nigerian who is incarcerated should be given salary too. If an ordinary Nigerian, maybe someone who stole a phone on the traffic is sent to jail and is not being paid, I don't understand why a senator that has been indicted should be paid. Then, after their service, if they have finished their tenure as uh, maybe serving their prison terms, they should go home they, because they don't have anything to offer us anymore. They don't have anything to offer us. They should just go home and, you know, maybe the ones that they did not recover from them as, as part the loot, they should make good use of it and that's enough. I think there's a saying that says what is good for the goose is also good for the gander. Am I right? And uh, for these as senators or whosoever may be, I think there are laws that are on ground for anybody that commits crime in Nigeria. So, and uh, based on that law, and I felt those laws come uh, emerge based on I mean based on human activities, probably within Nigeria by the senators or one way or the other. And uh, if the law could talk about it, that uh, somebody that commits social crime should be this, removed from work, and at the same time forfeit some of his salary or his pension, even the pension, then a senator is more or less a civil servant, or do we call them honorary, honorary servants? No. So if they are civil servants, then they should forfeit some of those things too, benefit they should have. Quite interesting. A lot of Nigerians are quite interesting to hear. And um, some know about the requirements, some do not know. But we are here to actually tell you what the law says and what 
is required to remove a, a seven senator from his seat. This week we are joined by a legal practitioner, not just a legal practitioner, he's also a security expert and he is the director general of the International Institute of Professional Security and he is Tony Ofoyeto. We are glad to be at your office. <laughs> Thank you for having me again. <laughs> Thank okay. you. It's always a pleasure to have this Thank you. informative and educative chat with you, sir. And then um, this time we're looking at something that is a bit political, but <laughs> it's quite interesting because it keeps coming up. We keep hearing that a senator was convicted, a senator was um, um, jailed, things like that. So what is required? Because recently, lo looking at the, st um, the situation Plateau of state. O o G Kalu, even okay. yeah, in Plateau, Plateau state, state and Red, what is required? Is the Senate even said they were not going to declare O G Kalu's seats vacant. What will it take? I think um, basically, um, legally, before there are conditions precedent to declaring the seat vacant. Um, one of such is uh, maybe that uh, as a result of death, uh, conviction, uh, illness, and um, which of course incapacitates the person yeah. not being able to perform his or her office or recalled by his or her constituency. Um, upon such conditions, uh, an occupant of such office can be declared uh, the National Assembly can and declare, declare the, seat. the seat vacant. Uh, however, however, the impediment, which is a major lacuna in the law, is that um, once uh, the position that makes the National Assembly to foot drag, in most cases, apart from the fact that one, it is politics, the politics of um, what of if it is me? <laughs> you understand? Mm -hmm. So, let us see how we can protect our brother. Paradventure, he can come back. That is one. Um, secondly, which is most important, is once a matter is on appeal, what happens in both cases is that there will be an application, you know, to hold the execution of judgment mm. uh, pending the determination of the appeal. Uh, that what that means is that uh, until the appeal um, is had and the decision taken, you can't declare that seat vacant, vacant because if not so, you make a nullity of the judgment of the court at the end of the day. Paradventure, a by-election is held and another person comes in and the court of appeal or the tribunal at the appeal level rather now says that no, the tribunal's decision was wrong. So at that point in time, it becomes a very serious legal logjam. So the uh, National Assembly will always play safe to say, let us wait until the final determination. Now in the event of, for example, in a case like that of um, Darie, like that of Carlo that were convicted. Mm. Now if there's an appeal on such conviction, until the appeal is heard, you know, uh, the National Assembly will want to play the politics of let us wait. And don't forget that it is the responsibility of the National Assembly to transmit the information to INEC. Upon, it is upon the declaration of a vacant seat that INEC cannot conduct a by-election. Mm. If that seat has not been declared by the National Assembly as being vacant, INEC and is incapacitated. So nobody should blame my neck. You can only bring my neck in if the seat has been declared vacant. And the National Assembly will not declare the seat vacant except there's an uh, except appeal of I got it to the apex court and a final decision has, has been, been taken. taken. Now for the issue of illness, in most cases, I think the constituency has a major role to play. Because what will happen naturally is that because of it's a political gathering don't forget that so it is not the constituency that in most cases would have to engineer or start the process of recalling that sick either senator, senator or member of the house, house of, of rep yeah because he can no longer perform such function, function. you know as a result of ailments 
um, even as a result of uh, indictment and all those stuff like that, they can even if you say that uh, he's not meeting up to our expectation, you can recall any of such, although it has not happened successfully. The nearest one was that of um, Dino Melai, mm. which didn't scale through expectedly anyway, <laughs> you know. So I think that's just my position as far as that is concerned. Uh, okay, so now looking at another issue, the issue of um, payments of salaries in such a situation. Now, the issue of Darie, the issue of Oji uh, Uzokalu, they are in prison. Will they continue to receive salaries while in prison? No, they are not supposed to. Mm. Now, I use the word supposed to because I understand the type of country we are. Now, it depends on the party that they were. Um, before the conviction. If they are in the ruling party and they have been the good boy in the ruling party, I will not be surprised if the money is being paid to them. But if they are in the opposition party, it is automatic that the money will stop immediately. But the ideal thing is that once a person has been convicted of a crime, he is already a convict, a criminal. He is not entitled to such honorable benefits. Don't forget that the parliament is meant to be, you know, the gathering of honorables. Mm. People with distinguished characters. Impeccable. Unfortunately, I am sorry to say that um, it seems to be the other way around. You know, in many a times where we have a lot of senators, members of House of Red being convicted of one crime or the other, it now brings, you know, a lot of uh, dotted commas in their impeccability so to me the normal thing is that once there's a conviction there's already a caveat that must be played on all such financial benefit they are you know by construction they are no longer members of the house of rep for the time being you know if if they appeal and they succeed in the appeal the areas can be given to them no okay. problem about that there is a hold. You understand? Mm. If you go on appeal and you succeed, all monies are released to you. It is just like um, when your employer decides to say that he uh, is suspending you, you know, without following uh, your terms and conditions of your employment. And you now go to court and you are able to succeed in establishing the fact that your dismissal or your termination was, was wrong, mm. that you were wrongfully terminated. And once it is established that you were wrongfully terminated, all the areas of your salaries and your emolument are paid to you. Mm. You understand? Yes. But if you are not able to succeed in that, you forfeit everything. That's it, the way it works. Quite interesting. That is very, very informative. And uh, we've been listening to Tony Ofoyeton, who's been giving us the basic um, reasons why this seat of a seventh senator can be declared vacant at an occasion of death incapacitating illness or when the senator is recalled probably in cases like um, when we have a senator being convicted but the national assembly must communicate with the independent national electoral commission to say that that seat is vacant so that they would order an election to replace the seven senator we want to go on a quick break we'll be back with more on you.gov
Yeah, welcome back if you just joined us this is studio.gov and we've been looking at a very very interesting topic declaring the seat of a seven senator vacant and of course we're joined by a very erudite uh, legal practitioner and erudite scholar and security practitioner tony ofoyeto indeed we are at his office and we are still very pleased to be in your domain <laughs> at this time sir um, but looking at some other issues in terms of the national assembly and nigeria legislation generally we've been hearing uh, protests about the fact that the the pay and the allowances received by these senators by members of the house of representatives they are too much and um, also that they don't sit all the time they take a lot of recesses what is your opinion on that well of course um as a nigerian i will um agree with them that um, the money is much and um, if you look at it vis-a-vis -vis service delivery um, you will know that um, it is um, not commensurate um, having said so I, I think that um, in as much as I concede to the fact that um, the payment at the level of the National Assembly is mongos but the corruption itself is not based at the national assembly the headquarters of corruption in nigeria is the civil service and unfortunately the government is not even looking at the civil service it's looking at political office holders are temporary the maximum they spend is eight years Senators, maybe if very fortunate, would go for four or five times. But you compare with a civil servant that would have to be there for 35 years. It is the civil servant that teaches the politician how to steal. The politicians come there many a times as greenhorns. They don't know what to do to be able to get out of some things but they are interested and willing now it is the civil servants that teaches them how to steal unfortunately the government is some people are always crying um, the politicians are eating our money politicians are doing this politicians are doing that how much the whole national assembly how much is their annual budget compared to one state governor one state governor so the problem is not with national assembly i agree that there's high level of corruption there i agree that they don't stay so much they earn too much that they work for some of them will come there and be sleeping i agree in national fact some of us believe that look why don't you make this thing like um, a part-time thing and pay them allowance per sitting and the sitting must be when you sit if you didn't sit you forfeit that allowance that you, you like, understand it sounds like a good idea uh, if you don't sit you forfeit that allowance now when you do like that it will shock you that at every sitting the parliament will be jam-packed but this one is man no man if i don't come today no say you to no go come tomorrow so cover my track that is the concept at the national assembly there and that's what is not helping us but the problem is not mainly domicile at the national assembly the problem problem is domicile with the ministry that's the civil service like the civil service before. they are the main problem of this country the politicians are just like ready-made tools that are ready to take it out out of every 10,000 naira politician steals, what came out was actually 25,000. Wow. The rest 15,000 naira distributed among other civil servants. Go and check it. Who are the people talk up about procurement? Are the politicians responsible for procurement? If you talk about contract, is it going to go through political office holders? not at all but how do they still they still true contract inflated contract 
Who are the people that these things will pass through their table in the name of due diligence? And they are never due in any diligence. It's the civil servants. So if you ask me, you want to fight corruption, go to the institution. Strengthen the institution. Wash the institution. Sack some permanent secretary. Find some, in short, prosecute some accountant general. Hmm, quite interesting. And, and that's actually a very, very salient point. But looking at this issue you've raised, it's also part of the corruption anti corruption campaign going on by this administration, the uh, President Muhammad Buhari led administration. But looking at the National Assembly again, People are saying why, why they are concerned about their pay and asking for reduction of this, their, the allowances and amounts that they receive. They are saying because the number of representatives, in, for instance, is quite high. We have uh, over 300 representatives. We have senators in large numbers. And they are saying the, their number, we are not <coughs> feeling the impact in the society. And that is why they are saying they should act, either reduce the number of seven senators and House of Representative members or reduce their allowances and remuneration. So what do you think? No, the, the issue is um, National Assembly. The numerical strength is not, is not that alarming. Um, if not for the fact that you are talking about um, the cost of governance. Um, you are talking of a nation with 200 million. So if you look at it vis-a-vis, -vis, all of them at the National Assembly are less than 2,000. Yeah, you are talking of 200 million. million. Don't forget that when they break into plenary session, the work of legislating is a difficult task. I will tell you, go and ask any average lawyer. They will tell you that it is not as easy as we think. However, because of the fact that they've not been faithful financially, and because of the high level of corruption in this country, that is why we are shouting. It's not necessarily because they are too much. Mm -hmm. No. Mm -mm. It's not because they are too Because they break into plenary session at the end of the day to shock you that some of them will just be three, five, six at the end of the day when they break into different distance. So it's not, it's not as if they are much. It is the cost that is involved. And it is also the fact that you have elected somebody to come and legislate and the person is in his farmhouse, he's in his business, he's in Dubai, he's in England. And if you call, he will tell you I'm on medical vacation. And meanwhile, that doesn't stop his money there. Mm -hmm. I think that these are things, like I've said earlier, if it is not such that it is mandatory that if you don't attend <laughs> plenary. a plenary and you don't attend any session at all, your money is not paid to you. It will it shock you that even if the money is 4,000 naira per they, sitting, they will appear. They will appear. Hmm. Even if it's as small as 4,000 naira per sitting, they will appear. You understand? So uh, they, they, they should now look inward. It's their responsibility to wash themselves. Having understood and seen the, the emotions, the psychology and the impression of the average Nigerian about them. It is now left for them to not bring the honorability that is in them. If they are truly honorable, let them make legislation laws for themselves to regulate themselves. Mm. Nobody can make such law. But the best way they can prove to us that they are honorable is to make laws that would not make us believe that they are truly honorable. In the absence of that, we still see them as just normal, normal, <laughs> normal Nigerians. You know, yes, so yes. Ap apart from um, recommending that um, sittings should be made compulsory in terms of um, if you are absent in sitting, for instance, the senator should not get paid. Do you have any other recommendation in this regard? Maybe uh, for the general public, for the benefit of the public, any recommendation that would help strengthen our National Assembly, our hallowed chambers? Well, I think one of the best things I'm expecting is the success of the recall of a senator or a member of a House of Rep, um, irrespective of the party. Uh, once that scales through successfully, it becomes a precedent. And once that precedent is there, it would help our legislative system. 
Um, the Nigerians have not um, been so conscientized and so educated to understand that they have the power to recall any of their representative that is not representing them well. Mm. You just imagine somebody going to the National Assembly for four years and all he did through that four years is I concur. <laughs> that is all. He never moved any motion, never passed, moved any bill, never did anything other than I concur and to sleep. Those type of people are not supposed to be there. They are supposed to be in the farm, in their businesses. But when you have professional politicians at the National Assembly, my sister, mm -hmm. it will still be business as, as usual. usual. Come 2023, eh? in short, the money will increase. The money will increase because professional politicians that come into politics is coming just for one thing. Make the money and get out. It's not, it's, you will see the campaign. A constituency project, project. is federal mm -hmm. government money, is this and that. How many of us even know what is the constituency project you know in your environment? I, I was the going best, to about the it. best you can <laughs> ever see. If you have a very good senator, it's, it's a, a borehole. Boho project. It's a borehole. Or to talk about public toilets, like uh, one of the senators in Ogun State went to launch a public toilet. I mean, just imagine the height of and senators distributing, uh, what do you call it, uh, kiwi polish. Uh, <laughs> oh my <laughs> I, God. I actually oh my. know that it's, it's senators quite... distributing wheelbarrow. Hmm. Wheelbarrow. That, uh, according to them, that is their meaning of youth empowerment. empowerment. Distributing wheelbarrow. Wheelbarrow, my sister. It's an insult to distribute wheelbarrow to youth. To youth, wheelbarrow, to youth. That type of senator should be shot. Because it's anti-Nigeria. I know it's, a, it's quite painful to see that uh, we have senators and we don't really hear about them doing anything. And that's why people have been saying, let them be reduced, let their pay be reduced and things like that. But now you talked about recall, recalling of a senator. That's another issue that I'll be looking at at another um, opportunity, at another episode. And uh, but at this time, I want to say a very big thank you thank for you, your man. time and for the passion you always put in to educate us and um, inform us. Thank you so much, sir. It's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Okay quite interesting i know that you've been listening and you've been watching and seeing the passion exuded by our great speaker our area speaker tony ofoyeto and he shed light on many of these issues happening in the national assembly uh, but this time i want us to take a look at the national assembly and of course we have some tidbits up next Well, that's the much we can take this week on U.gov. It's quite interesting to know that you are there listening and watching. And we would like to hear from you. We would like you to use our hashtag, hashtag U.gov and hashtag the Lover Plus to get information and to send your comments to issues that are trending at the national level. We want to hear from you. We want to be able to interact with you. So we'd like you to also download our app, Lover Plus, on any of the mobile app stores. You can also visit our website for comments and updates on www.lover.com. 
loveuplus.tv. You can send emails to us and you can also send comments to the number showing on your screen now. I am Itohan Olomoagbodo. And remember that we said we are going to be looking at the issue of um, recalling a senator, recalling a legislator in Nigeria. But for now, God bless Nigeria.